During the early 19th century, what belonged to the public through the public trust doctrine would be put to the test, the first of which would be a battle over oysters. By right of discovery or conquest per British laws, lands, waters, and the lands under these waters were granted to noblemen by the king. After the American Revolution, the people of each state became themselves sovereign and in that character now held an absolute right to land, waters, and the wildlife living there. In the New World, we didn't want wildlife to be a privilege of royalty. On the other hand, we didn't know how it could be owned or governed. When we wrote the Declaration of Independence, we didn't declare what ownership of wildlife meant. The young federal government couldn't claim ownership. That's just about like having a king claim it. We needed something different. Who owned what in America would be decided by the Supreme Court, and the result would have lasting implication for every American citizen. The commoners of New Jersey began complaining that the livelihood of their families was being threatened by wealthy oystermen who had influence over the local courts to uphold the privatization of coastal and estuary oyster beds from which they had been freely gathering food. Their plight raised the question whether oyster beds, thriving in the estuaries and inlets of the Atlantic coast, should be common holdings or private property. This was the question that riverbed oystermen took to the New Jersey Supreme Court in 1821. To the surprise of both parties, in the landmark case of Arnold versus Mundy, a court of patrician men of wealth ruled for the commoners, and in so doing, upheld the principle of public trust. If the Supreme Court had decided that wildlife would be private property, the precedent would be disastrous for the future of America. Imagine a country where every mountain, every bird, every river, every beach, indeed every living thing was owned by an individual or a corporation. Our traditions of family vacations, weekend, camping or hiking trips, trips to the beach, bird watching would be radically different. Today, the public trust doctrine refers to a common law doctrine creating the legal right of the public to use certain lands and waters and the wildlife living there. Oysters, water rights. While these may not seem to have any relevance to our opportunity to hunt game animals, these court cases paved the way to codify public hunting. Things might have been very different in North America had these court cases leaned toward individual ownership of natural resources, including wildlife, rather than their clear response to establish wildlife as a public trust resource. I have had the opportunity to travel much of Europe and Africa, studying their systems of natural resource ownership, use and management. I can honestly tell you that we are truly blessed in North America to have the system we have. In other places, individual ownership of wildlife may not only exclude the majority of citizens from enjoying wild creatures, it often isolates wildlife onto private preserves. Wildlife is therefore less abundant elsewhere and sometimes poorly managed. But democratic access is the basic and most important distinction. For us to be able to purchase a license and go hunting is a very special thing.